It's a conflict of personalities. Uh, regrettable, but unavoidable. Yes, well, I don't like having to complain about a colleague, Mr. Winters, but I can't stand his fits of temper any longer. Ah, forget it. It just happens to be Nutter's one big failing. Now, you go in there and work with Benson. You'll, you'll find him agreeable enough. He's as placid as baked custard. Yes, sir. More industrial strike, Mr. Yes, Winters? it's Nutter again. He'll just have to start controlling his temper. You, I dare tell you what he just called poor Mr. Coles. You don't have to. I heard it through the wall. Mm, yes. Well, there's nothing for it. I shall just have to speak to him. Mr. Nutter. Yes. Everything all right? Marvellous. Splendid. Um, I've decided to move Mr. Coles into employer's liaison for a few weeks. Thank you, Mr. Winters. It'll be nothing new for me to have to do two men's jobs. Quite. Well, keep up the good work. Yes. Oh, pardon me. Have I already been in here once, and did you tell me to try next door? No, that wasn't me. Ah, good, then you must be next door but one. You see, I've already tried next door, and they said try two doors lower down, which I thought was next door to where I'd already been, but obviously I was wrong. <laughs> so, if this isn't next door, and I haven't been in here before, I must be right. <laughs> to save any further argument, this is the Department of Employment and Productivity. That's right, next door but one. <laughs> I go, tell me, is, uh, is Mrs. Castle in? <laughs> do you mean Barbara Castle? Well, I do, but I didn't want to sound too familiar. <laughs> Barbara Castle doesn't work here. Oh, I thought she did. Has there been another reshuffle? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Barbara Castle works for the Department of Employment and Productivity, but uh, in Whitehall. Ah, I see you have other branches. <laughs> do you... Uh, know where you are. Eh? Oh, no, oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a local office in what people used to call the employment exchange. Yeah, that's right, next door but one. But well, if you want to see Barbara Castle, why have you come here? No, I don't want to see her specially, just that she seems a nice, kind, helpful sort of person, and I do have a slight problem. Is it personal? Well, it is, if you're prepared to accept that I'm a person. <laughs> <laughs> I received this rather official looking envelope the other week and it roused my curiosity. Bit of a slow riser, your curiosity, isn't it? This is postmarked two months ago. Yeah, well, I've been rather busy decorating a back bedroom. <laughs> For two months? <laughs> a very difficult ceiling. <laughs> Please leave small white and sliced brown. <laughs> eh? Oh, yeah, Mr. Hinchcliffe. Who? My bread man. You see, I was just rushing out to get some more pork, more paint, and I didn't want to miss him. That was the only paper I had to write on. Would you please turn over? I'll do a couple of backflips if you ask me nicely. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> I meant the envelope. Well, this is from Social Security. Yes, I know it too, but what does it mean? It means you've come to the wrong place. Are you sure? It's definitely next door but one. Yes, but it's not Social Security. Is it? Well, where will I find it? Next door but one. <laughs> But when I was there, they said this was next door but one. Well, it is, if you are there. But it can't be when I was there, they said it was here. Look, we're making a mountain out of a molehill, aren't we? All this letter says is they want your old insurance card back so they can issue you with a new one. What is there in that to arouse your curiosity? Well, a great deal when you think about it, because I don't need a new insurance card. I've got plenty of spaces for stamps on my old one. In fact, uh, here we are, I can prove it there. <laughs> So you've got a card with one, two, three, four, five stamps on it. All that proves is that you're 47 short. Exactly. So I don't need a new one, do I? <laughs> you are 47 stamps short because you haven't bought them. I should think. Do you know how much they cost? <laughs> of course I do. I have to buy them, don't I? Yeah. You're working, aren't you? Don't you work? 
Well, I do sometimes, and when I do, I put a stamp on that. Fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> so what it boils down to is, you are looking for work. Well, I suppose you could say that. In fact, I'm glad you did, because I am. I wish people would say what they want when they come in. Well, if you remember, when I, I knew what I wanted, I wanted to know if you were the man who said, try next door. Yes, and if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have said yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have told you I've already tried it. It's a firm of solicitors. Full name, please. Thornton, Smedle and Smog. <laughs> I beg your pardon? They're commissioners for oaths. <laughs> That's handy because I'm just about to come out with one. <laughs> I want your full name. It's Harry Worth, two words, and uh, <laughs> the address is on that card. Right, now what shall I put you down as? Mail. <laughs> <laughs> That's very helpful, that is. <laughs> it is when your voice breaks. <laughs> Look, don't come the old parry and thrust with me, mate. I'm trying to fill this form in. Now, what do I put down as your regular job? Well, at the moment, trying to find one. I can't put that down. I want to know your qualifications. You mean for being out of work? No, I need something definite like um, shipbuilder or window cleaner. Oh, well, put window cleaner. Oh, so you clean windows? Well, I clean more windows than I built ships. <laughs> What was the last job you had? Now, well, I have to think about that, yes. I was an astronaut. <laughs> an astronaut for two days. Are you trying to tell me you went up in a three-stage rocket? No, I went round in a 1,500-weight van. <laughs> Used to knock on doors, six of us trying to sell lunar washing powder. <laughs> If they bought the giant economy size, we used to give them a plastic petunia. So you're a salesman? Well, I would have been had I sold any. You know, they made those space helmets too tight. I could never shout loud enough to make people understand what I was talking about. I think that's why I got the sack. Or for, it was for selling the plastic petunias and giving the soap powder away. It was very confusing. Yes, it sounds. Now, <laughs> uh, what other jobs have you had? Well, let me think. I did five days snow shifting last February. You mean officially for the local authority? Yes, you could say that. Look, it's not what I say, it's what you say. Oh, I'm not saying anything. I was told to keep my mouth shut. You see, it happened like this. I was clearing a pavement. Well, I was clearing a way to the pavement. Uh, and that's, uh, the snow plow came round the corner. And all I did was ask the workmen on the back of the lorry if they'd mind me putting my snow on with theirs. The next thing I knew, I was gritting the high street. <laughs> Did you ask them to stop and let you off? At 14 and 6 months an hour, I tell you I was sorry when it bored. <laughs> uh, let me put it another way. Is there any particular job you think you're suitable for? Well, I'm very good with people. You're not doing so bright with me. <laughs> now, uh, how does this strike you? The British Railways are looking for a booking clerk. Yes, he's probably suffering from loss of memory. <laughs> Do you happen to know if there's any money missing as well? I think I'll leave that one. The gas council are looking for meter readers. Which doesn't surprise... You know, it must be awful having to crawl under people's stairs to read the meter. I can't think of anybody who would like a job like that. How about a postman? Yes, he might fancy it. <laughs> well, yes. Anything's better than walking the street. I think I'll put that another way. Would you like a job as a postman? <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> I was an auxiliary postman, Christmas before last, never again, you know. They told me to empty the cards out of a pillar box one Friday night. It was a week the following Wednesday before I delivered them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mate, it's two minutes to twelve and I'm on an early lunch. Now, can we get down to brass tacks? Is there any particular job you think you are capable of doing? Well, yes, it's only just occurred to me, but I think there is. And what's that? Yours. <laughs> well, no, not exactly yours, but one like it. I think I'd be rather good at it. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I fancy myself sitting behind the counter, and the idea of finding people work and getting paid for it definitely appeals to me. Oh, it does, does it? Hmm. What's, uh, what's the money like? Money? For you? <laughs> for a chap who can't tell the difference between a plastic, plastic petunia and a packet of soap suds? For an auxiliary postman who's never heard of a sorting office. I'll tell you what you are, mate. You're a five-star, chromium-plated, double-barreled, steamed-up... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
is going on? They can hear you in the next street. It's this bloke here, not content with driving me round the bend. He's running up the straight and trying to get back into the paddock at the same time. It's my early lunch, Mr. Winter, and if this fellow's still here when I come back, I shall probably nip, nip out and have another one. Oh, really? Would it do any good at all if I was to say I'm sorry? Oh, no, it's not you he's worried about. I'm aghast. I pride myself on being a student on human nature, but what do you suppose that was? Mm, I'm afraid our Mr. Nutter is very overwrought and very highly strung. Are we getting along so well? It practically fixed me up with your job, and all I'd come into us was, was this next door but one. Typical. Mr. Nutter flares up at the least thing. Ah, but why? Now, why does he do it? I'd like to study your Mr. Nutter in depth. Are you interested in psychoneurosis? Uh, yes, very. <laughs> Very, uh, anything to do with work. I was just saying how much I'd like to work behind the counter. Now, that's very interesting. Yes, it is interesting, yes, isn't it? it yes, is, mm. yes. You see, we're rather short-staffed at the moment. I wonder if you consider joining us for a probationary period. Well, I, I'll consider it, of course, but I'm making no promises. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, having considered it, when can I start? Well, I, just, I was just going to ask you the same thing. Well, why don't we both start at the same time? I'm free if you are. Come into the general office and meet our Mr. Coles. Now, you could work with him in employee's liaison, and that would free Benson to work with Nutter in here. Ah. Uh, this gentleman is going to join our staff. Would you ask Mr. Coles to come in and show him the ropes? Certainly, Mr. Winters. This is my secretary. How do you do? I'm Miss Fuller. How do you do? I didn't get a name. Miss Fuller, she's your secretary. <laughs> no, I know my secretary is your name. Oh, no, 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 my name is Harry Worth. What goes on in there? That's where we interview employers and their representatives on the manpower mm. problem. I see. The work comes in there and you hand it out in there. Well, broadly speaking, mm. yes. Now, look, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Coles will put you through the ropes. I have to get on with the work. Ah, yes, you carry on. Don't worry about me. I'll soon get the hang of it. Ah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You must be Mr. Cole. That's right. Yeah. I just heard a rumour that you might be joining us. Yeah, there must be something in it, because that's what I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Have you uh, done anything like this before? Oh, no, you can regard yourself as starting with a clean sheet. Well, would you come in here and we'll dirty it a little? <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. Is it? Well, you reminded me of the time I was an astronaut selling soap powder. <coughs> oh, did I? <coughs> One more for the treadmill, Frank. Well, we'd better get properly acquainted. This is Mr. Benson. Ah, no, I think you're a little confused. This is Mr. Benson. I'm Harry Worth. I uh, assure you, I'm not in the least confused. Well, I think I am. What goes on? Ah, uh, well, it's probably my fault. I should have explained, you see. I'm going to work with Mr. Coles. You are going to work with Mr. Nutter. Is that right? Well, those are my instructions. Oh, are you the manager, then? Oh, no, no, Mr. Winters is the manager. This is Mr. Coles. I'm Harry Worth. Mr. Nutter's gone for lunch. Uh, you know, I've got a funny feeling you were all we needed. Ah, thank you. I shan't forget your confidence. <laughs> nice chap. Very. Mm. I just hope his niceness lasts. <laughs> well, this will be your desk if you'd like to sit behind it. Thank you. I'll give you a quick outline of our procedures. Yeah. Now, uh, broadly speaking, there are two... Uh, basic uh, lines of inquiry, and we are concerned uh, with the uh, supply and demand of labour. I see. We have no truck with the Conservatives. <laughs> I'm not speaking politically. I'm talking about jobs. Check. Now, these um, are the two basic lines of inquiry, uh, mm -hmm. each with its own questionnaire, Form mm -hmm. A and Form B. Now then, uh, Form A is completed by employers wanting workmen. Well, form B is completed by workmen wanting employees. Very good. Yeah, uh, just a shot in the dark. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Cole. You've explained that very well. Would you care to join me for lunch? I haven't finished yet. Oh, sorry. Now then, take Form A. Yeah. Now, let us assume that I am an employer who's come to see you about filling some things. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I'm a builder. You're a builder. And I want some bricklayers. Now, how can you help me? I can't. Why not? I've never laid a brick in my life. <laughs> and apart from that, as you can see, I'm going to be rather busy filling in forms. <laughs> Mr. Worth, I don't want your help in laying bricks. I want you to help me find suitable work. Now, uh, complete the form and ask me the relevant questions. Certainly, certainly, certainly. First question. Yes. Have you got a pen? <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. Uh, name, please. John Smith. Uh, look here, before we go any further, 
I think you'll find it will pay to tell the truth, Mr. Coles. <laughs> this is just hypothetical. Now, you know I'm not really a builder. Ah, you didn't fool me. I, I just couldn't understand why you came in wanting all those bricklayers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is... This is just an exercise. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Now, do come on. I want you to fill this for me. Yes. Right. Um, address. One every street, any town. Uh, yes. What county? Oh, never mind the preliminary details. Move on to the questions about personnel required. Ah, uh, quite so. Here we are, state precisely, occupation of personnel required, giving minimum qualifications expected. Uh, do you mind if I stop you? Not at all, Mr. Smith. My time is yours. I'm not speaking as Mr. Smith now. Oh, aren't you? You've got to win my confidence. When I walk out of here, I want to feel that you are the most industrious, efficient go-getter it's ever been my good fortune to meet. Then you will have no fear, but you've got to give me a chance. I'm just a raw beginner. Yes, but you know I'm a builder, so you can make a friend of me. Yeah. Ask me, uh, how many houses did I build last year? How many sites am I operating? How do I cope with all the bad weather we've been having? Make me feel that you are really interested in all my business activities. Yeah. And then, Instead of just reading the question as it's printed, you should say something like, uh, well, Mr. Smith, we must find you some first-class bricklayers. Uh, how many do you think you'll need? Uh, what sort of qualifications should they have? Can you absorb a proportion of trainees? And all the time, you see, you're getting your form filled in, and I'm sitting here saying to myself, thank heavens for the Department of Employment and Productivity. And well, you might, Mr. Smith. There's no flies on us. Now, shall we move on to the next one? <laughs> Oh, yes, all right. Carry on. Now, Mr. Smith, would you just tell me one thing? <laughs> How's the state of your bank balance? <laughs> Bless your pop. I bet you're making quite a sum of money. Aren't you throwing those houses up? Am I right? Skimming the plaster here, leaving out the damp door there. <laughs> I'll bet you're really coining it, aren't you? Tell me, between ourselves, how much money do you really... Wait a minute, <laughs> All this in aid of. But I'm taking the formality out of this next question. State maximum wages. But you can't slander <laughs> the poor man just for the sake of extracting information. Just, are you Mr. Coles again? Yes. Oh, well, not to worry. I'm only having a bit of fun. Mr. Smith knows I'm only pulling his leg. <laughs> <laughs> Never pull anybody's leg about money. And you get the answer to that question in a business-like way. You say, well, Mr. Smith, I'm confident that we can supply your needs. Absolutely confident. What sort of uh, remuneration do you think equitable? Oh, all right, Mr. Coles, but I still think you're splitting hairs. What about this one? Will canteen facilities be provided in the reasonable proximity of the place of employment? Oh, just say, have you got a canteen? Oh, I see. I don't mince words. Well, there's no point in going round the houses, is there? <laughs> well, he's building houses. He might have a shortage cut to the canteen. I have some rather serious news that I'm afraid will throw a great strain on our resources. Oh dear, what's the trouble, Mr. Winters? It's Mr. Nutter. He's just come back from lunch, and he, he referred to me in the most objectionable terms. Do you? You'd never believe what he called me. Why, is it anything we can repeat? <laughs> I have never heard such a vitriolic <laughs> outburst, and all because I accepted Mr. Worth here as a member of our staff. I'm not surprised. No, I'm not. He really has the most vicious temper. Well, he's gone too far this time. I dismissed him on the spot. Isn't that a bit severe? Couldn't you just have stopped his luncheon vouchers? <laughs> yes, I say, it will mean more work for the time being. Yes, well, we'll do all we can to help naturally, Mr. Winters. Yes, you can rely on us, Mr. Winters. We shall rally round the flag. <laughs> of course, we must remember that Mr. Worth here is entirely without experience. But learning fast, Mr. Winters, I can now place all the bricklayers you require. That's the spirit. <laughs> now, before I ring head office about a replacement for Nutter, are there any questions? Yes, there is. There's one. In view of the change conditions, would this be a convenient moment to ask about promotion? <laughs> Do you think I can have a few words with Mr. Winters while he's alone? I'm afraid not. Mr. Benson is in conference with Mr. Cole. Oh. I suppose they're discussing the oracle. Oh, don't be like that. I think Mr. Worth is a very sweet person. You've got to give him time to learn the job. Well, how long does he want? He's been here a week and he's still calling us the Department of Enjoyment and Inactivity. <laughs> That's just his sense of humour. And what about the way he goes dashing around asking all those silly questions? I spent the whole of Wednesday afternoon explaining to him what the dole was. 
Thursday morning is in the queue, trying to draw it. <laughs> Mr. Benson, I need your a little guidance. I've got a young woman in my office. Oh, well, that's against the rules for a start. <laughs> it's all highly official. She's a personal manager of a big department store, and apparently she's in need of someone in gents' underwear. Sounds a bit of a character. You don't know the half of it. She wants a lady. <laughs> I'm all for the equality of the sexes, but surely... Oh, look, man, for goodness sake, get the answers to the questions down on the form. The system will take care of the rest. All right, I'll do my best, but I think you'll agree it could be a bit embarrassing. Oh. Well, Miss Trimmings, it appears that ours is not to reason why. So I'll just mark the form. One lady in gents' underwear. <laughs> there we are. Will that be all? Not quite. We also need a manager for the complaints department. If you don't mind me saying so, Miss Trimmings, I'm not a bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what would you be requiring, a man or a woman, or what? We require a man. Ah, I see, just an ordinary, common, a garden plate, straightforward man. Yeah. Good, that gives us something to go at. About what age? Oh, fairly mature, but he must have tact, diplomacy, infinite patience, and an enormous capacity for listening to tales of woe. Oh, <laughs> sounds like an ideal job for a headbeck husband. Ha 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 ha! Oh dear me! <laughs> well, I don't want to go all around the houses, but do you have a canteen? On the premises. Mm -hmm. We also have recreational facilities for table tennis. Really? And we also have a restroom. And what a good idea! I know myself how exhausted you can get playing ping pong. <laughs> now then. As to wages. The post will be salaried, reaching fifteen hundred pounds, starting at eleven. Oh, well, that can't be bad. In most shops, they start at nine. <laughs> I wasn't talking about time. I was talking about money. Oh. The salary starts at eleven hundred pounds. Seven. With four annual increments. Four annual what? <laughs> increments. In is that anything to do with the new decimal coin? <laughs> Increments, increments. Increments. Yes. yes. If you'll excuse me, Miss Trimmings, I'd like to throw that one at our Mr. Winters. <laughs> ah, Miss Fuller, is Mr. Winters free? No, he's still with Mr. Coles. Is it a crisis? Uh, no, it's an increment. Well, I'll have a word with Mr. Benson. Believe me, Mr. Winters, I don't like having to keep complaining. Yes, well, I don't like having to listen to you, but I suppose I shall have to. Uh, however, we're agreed on that. I will transfer work into manpower availability with Benson and I'll find you a replacement as soon as I get permission from head office. Thank you, Mr. Winters. I can't tell you what a relief it's going to be. I don't know what's come over Coles, Miss Fuller. He doesn't seem to be able to work with anybody these days. Poor Mr. Worth being pushed about all over the place. How are you going to break the news to him? I shall come straight out with it. Ooh. Ah, Mr. Worth, we must have words. Uh, it's quite all right now, Mr. Winters. I do know all about it. Oh, you do? Evidently, it's a predetermined increase in salary. It is nothing of the sort. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Mr. Benson has just told me. Mr. Benson doesn't know the first thing about it. But why, now, why should he deliberately try to mislead me? According to him, it's an increase in salary, in this case, of 100,000. He's out of his mind now. Look, you go and work with Benson and I'll try to get to the bottom of it. You mean right away? Is there any reason why not? Well, there is really. I'm in the middle of organising a complaints department. Is this another of Benson's ideas? Oh, no, no, no. He's only helping me with it. Now, listen to me. We'll have no more of this nonsense. Now, from now on, you work with Benson. And send him, in the meantime, send him in to see me. Whatever you say, after all. You are the boss. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I just take that round for the release. Sign off the form. I'm sure it'll fix you up. Mr. Benson? Oh, no. They're sending me out here to work with you. Work with me? They can't do it. It's victimization. No, on the contrary, I'm quite looking forward to it. And by the way, will you go and have a word with Mr. Winters? You bet I will. Oh. Ooh. Good afternoon. Now what? <laughs> It's you, not you. Yes, I'm afraid so. Look, mister, if you come back to apologise, forget it, as far as I'm concerned, it's history. Well, just watch your step, mate, or history will repeat itself. Come on, Mr. Butter, don't let's get off on the wrong foot. To what do we owe this unexpected visit? Well, I'm not here for the good of my health. I'm after a job. Well, you've come to the right place. Is it for anybody we know? <laughs>
It's for me, you dozy looking dumbbell. <laughs> Mr. Nutter, you're crumpling my man made fiber. <laughs> well, stop getting me at it. I want a job. Now, what have you got to offer? Well, let's have a little decorum. You know as well as I do, I can't give you a job until we have filled in the form. Now, can I have your full name, please? George William Ralph Edward Theophilus Nutter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you'll have me drawing the old age pension. And we'll get round to the date of your birth in a moment, Theophilus. <laughs> Address, 147. Yeah, St. Cecilia Street. Yeah. Would you mind saying that again, slowly? St. Cecilia Street, St. Cecilia Street. Sorry, but you'll have to spell it. Give me the form. <laughs> Ah, St. Cecilia Street, I know it well. Yes. Now, tell me this. What was your regular job? You know full well what my regular job was. You have just done me out of it. Mr. Nutter, come along. The question has got to be answered. All right, put counter clerk. Counter clerk. There you are. It wasn't very painful, was it? Now, what about this one? Why did you leave your last place of employment? <laughs> If I have any more funny business from you, mate, you're going to finish up as a grease spot on the ceiling. Mr. Dutton, I'm doing my best to find you a job. We've got to move on. All right, we'll just have a little patience and I will. As a matter of fact, there's a wonderful job just come in. It's um, a complaints manager at a big store. All you need is a little tact and diplomacy. <laughs> You must be joking. <laughs> I dare say a sense of humour would help as well. What's the money like? Rising to fifteen hundred pounds a year. Give us a card. Do you promise to keep the peace? For fifteen hundred a year, I'd keep the wife's mother. <laughs> well, it's Grandison's department store. Ask for Miss Trimming. Thanks, mate. You're a top. I'll do the same for you one day. Well, now you're going to be a complaints manager. Here's your first complaint. You see, I bought this watch at that store only a week ago. Oh, yeah. And it has stopped. Oh, it stopped, has it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. Well, you've uh, dropped it. That's why it stopped. <laughs> then you picked it up again and you dropped it again. That's why it stopped. Ah, I see what happened. I think it done dropped it. Me. Yes. <laughs> You can't come in here pulling the wool over my eyes, mate, or I'll stuff it down your throat and give you a bunch of fives into the bargain. <laughs> I've just had a very revealing experience. So have I. Why did you tell Mr. Winters I said you were due for a ride? I didn't tell Mr. Winters anything of the sort. I'm getting rather worried about Mr. Winters. You know how he's always saying we can't put a square peg into a round hole? Well, what about it? He's quite wrong. I've just done it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my turn to see Mr. Winters yet? No, he's still with Mr. Worth. Da. Oh, well, never mind. Here's my resignation. Put it with the others. I never thought you'd be the one to give up the fight. I never thought I'd be working with the ultimate deterrent. <laughs> oh, so what you're saying, uh, Mr. Winters, that my services are no longer required? Not by us. Uh, Out! Well, it would appear that I have to seek my fortune elsewhere. Back to the Dole office. Goodbye. Goodbye. No hard feelings, I hope. None! Oh! <laughs> I shall miss him. So shall I. With the big satisfaction. <laughs> Harvey, have I already... Oh, dear. If you come to ask for your old job back, you're wasting your breath. Oh, no, it is that. Remember a couple of weeks I came in with my insurance cards that that stamp's missing? Shall I ever forget it? Uh, well, could I have it back because I need it for Social Security? Social Security? <laughs> do Next door but one. Yeah. When you say next door but one, do you mean next door but one that way or next door but one that way? <laughs> There's no need to take me, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.